Hey there, welcome to day 78 of our BU 365 day challenge. Do one thing every day that improves us. I like to say continuously improves, but sometimes we don't do things that improve us forever. We just do things that improve us for the for the moment, for the day. Now today we're gonna talk about the subject of memory. <laughs> Again, like neuro-linguistic programming and things, I've not studied a lot about memory, just what I needed as I've needed it to move my life in the direction I want it to go. We're continuing our focus for the entire month of March, this segment on mental well-being, mental health. So what the heck is memory? What types of memory are there? And how can we improve our memory? Most of us, especially as we're getting older, would like to improve our memory. And memory to me is more than memorizing things like we did in school. And we've all done that, right? We've all memorized our math facts. We've all memorized vocabulary spelling words. We've all memorized things like that. Remember those spelling tests we used to take every Monday or every Friday? We'd get the words on Monday, we'd take a practice test, then Friday we'd take the real test for a grade. <laughs> I'm sure I was not the only one that took spelling tests in school. So what are the different types of memory? I love the internet because if you research something on the internet these days, which is the greatest source of information imaginable, I mean, wish we would have had the internet when I was in college and studying and learning different things. It's information at our fingertips from sources we normally wouldn't even have access to. Now we could argue about, is the, are the algorithms filtering out information? And I would say they definitely are because it's changed in the last couple of years versus before when I would research topics, but it doesn't matter. <coughs> A lot of the algorithms are, are showing videos and ads and things more regularly. They can do whatever they want, that's their business. But it's still a great tool for us to begin our search into different topics or anything we would ever want to know. And I'm going to cough again. <coughs> For some reason, I get a, a weird throat some mornings. I will sip coffee and try to talk. Mm. So what my point is, sometimes I'll look something up and they'll say, these are the two types of memory. These are the two main types of memory. These are the four types. These are the six types. These are the eight types. And... If you let it, it could be very confusing. I choose not to let it. I choose to get a quick overview of a bunch of different sources. It's like if I'm studying a topic. I won't just read one book on the topic. I'll get a whole bunch of books on the topic so I know I'm not just getting one author's opinion on a subject. It's just like anything else. It's like watching only one news station or one uh, one social media all the time for all the information and thinking that that's a clear representation of the entire world, the entire planet. It's absolutely not. We have to get many sources to feed our memory the things we want. So what are the two sources? The two types of memory are short-term and long-term. So they can divide memory into our memories that uh, happen and we remember a phone number. That would be short-term memory or long-term. Then there's the working memory, the sensory memory, the short-term and long-term. That's the four and then the eight were working, sensory, short-term, long-term, implicit, explicit, and I had to look those up. Uh, autobiographical, I autobi, okay, let's see if I can see this. Autobiographical memory, and then something called memory and Morpheus, which I still don't understand. I started to research it, and then we got company, so I was like, hmm, I'll just say I don't understand it, because I don't understand it. And do I need to? I think it's got something to do with memory and how our memory changes when we sleep whether it's enhanced or or not enhanced and there's scientific arguments about it but it seems scientists believe now that as we sleep old they used to believe that when we slept we lost memories and we lost detail and information i don't think i believe that either but now scientists believe that as we sleep our brain organizes and works on the information that we've gathered through the day and and files it away in our brains however our brain decides to file it away now, uh, what the heck even is memory? Let me, let me read a little definition of this. You know, uh, memory is our continued process of info retention over time. So does our memory increase over time or decrease over time? It depends on the individual. Um, believed by most scientists that it's an integral part of human cognition. That means our thinking since it allows individual human beings to recall and draw upon past events to frame their understanding behavior within the present moment. So we're the only beings that can, and, and I don't know that that's true either. I think that animals based on instinct and experience can behave differently in 
when when faced with that same experience again i don't know maybe maybe i'm wrong but i think that there's belief is scientific belief is that humans are the ones that have all the thinking and all the reasoning ability and that every again not going to get i'm not even going to get into that because that's a whole can of worms and i don't know i'm not a i'm not a brain scientist so implicit memory versus explicit memory implicit memory is the automatic way that we remember everything everything <laughs> that our senses our five or six senses ever pick up and ever experience from the probably before we're born from the moment we're conceived on is stored in our implicit memory we don't have any conscious recall or we, we may have very little conscious recall of all the things that are, are saved and stored by our magnificent brains and minds everything is stored so everything we see feel taste touch hear think believe that every experience we've ever had it's all absorbed and stored in our brain somewhere stored away in our mind somewhere in in our memory that's our implicit memory we don't necessarily have the ability to recall that if someone asks us a question we can't necessarily say how we were feeling on march 6th 2020 right <laughs> who knows right who knows what we were doing on march 6th of 2020 i don't know it was a week before my birthday my 60th birthday so i have no idea what i was doing i was probably doing what i always do or mostly my usual daily routines so explicit memory is the memory that we can recall and describe to someone else if you witness a, a, a an event an experience or a crime or something or you have an experience it's what you can explicitly remember and and really put into words and share uh either in writing or with other people about something in your life autobiographical is i think of it as our lifeline exercises the one we talked about a while back where we can describe the milestone points to us from our past and it's the memories we have of certain events in our life that pay, that are easy to recall because it was either an experience or a highly charged emotional event or something that uh, we keep in mind and is actually impacting us as we move forward throughout our life so again there's a bunch of different types of memory working memory is probably the one we think of the most because it's it's short term it's very short term we can temporarily put information in there but it's how we reason things out it's how we make decisions it guides our decision making because we we pull up all the facts from our subconscious and, and the information we need and we store it in our working memory our short-term memory and we use it to make decisions and choices and then we do the thing we take the action on the thing we do and then it all goes back into our our long-term memory storage right and it gets added to maybe depending on the event our autobiographical memory so it's just like anything else any other framework we can look at things any way we want to the most important way is how we see it how you see it how i see it but every other people are going to categorize things and you can decide which categorization feels best for you to me short term and long term is good enough right for for my purposes my personal purposes of memory and understanding memory and bottom line i don't need to know or understand any of my brain or how it works i just want to know how to improve my memory. So I looked up, well, how do we improve our memory? And I found a study of seven tips from Mayo Clinic. And then of course I continued to search and I found 12 tips and 15 tips and 10 tips. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going with Mayo Clinic. Good, reliable source of well-being and wellness information. We'll go with their list. So from Mayo Clinic, they say, how do we improve our memory? Seven tips. One, include physical activity in your daily routine in your daily activity make sure you're getting up and moving physically every single day why because moving physically increases our blood flow to every part of our body including our brain number two uh, <clears throat> stay mentally active i say read watch engage think for yourself every day um, do things do crossword puzzles do any kind of puzzle do word searches do anything that keeps your brain engaged something that you can read and think about or remember events. Maybe you write or journal every day. Any of those type of activities could help to keep you mentally active. Uh, three, socialize regularly. Get involved with other people. Have conversations. Don't be a hermit. <laughs> Make sure that you're engaging with other people. Four, get organized. Five, sleep well. Six, 
eat a healthy diet, and seven, manage chronic uh, conditions like stress, perhaps, or any chronic illnesses, uh, pain, or any uh, health challenges or mental challenges, especially since we're talking about mental this week. If you're in a constant situation of stress or relationships, manage those situations so that they are not having such a, a negative or any negative impact on you. Now, if you think about this list, it's a similar list we've seen in other areas and aspects of our life, right? How do we stay physically and emotionally better? How, how do we improve our physical well-being? How do we improve our emotional well-being? How do we improve our mental well-being? Similar list each time, right? So what's cool about that is if I created some habits in my physical and my emotional well-being, they carry over and they impact my mental well-being as well. So today our action item is just to share one way, one strategy, one thing that you have done in the past or currently do to increase your memory, to help you remember things. Mine is, if I want to remember it, if it's important, I got to write it down. If I don't write it down, it it's lost in a second. If I have an idea or a thought about something or a solution to a problem that I've been working on for a while, and if I don't write it down as soon as it pops in my head, guess what? About 20 seconds later, it's gone and I won't be able to remember it. So my memory trick is, my memory strategy is to write things down. Share one thing that you do in the comments below and I will be with you tomorrow for another topic in our mental well-being for this segment of our annual challenge. Any questions, ask, otherwise I will be with you tomorrow.